Okay, good afternoon everybody. Um, my name's Stephen Archer, as you can see. Um, and I'm here with you today to talk about temporary traffic management and policing the standards that have been put in place um, for the industry over the last uh, sort of four to five years. A little bit of background about myself, first of all. Um, I've worked in the temporary traffic management industry as a specialist industry for the last 16 years. As you can probably tell from the accent, I'm not originally from Ireland, I'm from Birmingham in the UK. However, for the last six years I've been working within the Irish market in the specialist temporary traffic management industry, um, predominantly on the uh, training end of the industry, training various private sector organisations, local authorities, etc. Um, as I said, today I'm going to talk to you about policing the standards um, and auditing systems and things like that for temporary traffic management activities. So first of all, what are the standards we're looking at? Well, the first one that's up there, we've got the Traffic Signs Manual Chapter 8, which is the, the industry bible, as it was its name. Um, it's one chapter of the Traffic Signs Manual, which consists of ten chapters. Each chapter of the Traffic Signs Manual has in certain situations got um, things applicable within it to the temporary traffic management industry as well. So it's not purely Chapter 8 that deals with the, the temporary industry. Um, there are other uh, elements of the other chapters as well which are applicable. At the moment Chapter 8 is probably half a document and the authorities are fully aware of this as well. Um, there's a, it's a really a design guidance document at the moment. Whereas the operation side of Chapter 8 is yet to be written um, and that is something that is coming uh, in the future. So um, for those of you that use it regularly, um, it will be kind of doubling in size in the next couple of years as well. The second one listed there, we've got the guidance for the control and management of traffic at roadworks. And there's a brand new edition, um, the second edition which was recently, recently released at the end of uh, August there. A lot of extra guidance within the guidance document. It's a, a valuable document for the industry, for people who are working on single carriageway roads or what's termed level one to four roads. It really gives the extra guidance where traffic, chapter eight, I wouldn't say it's lacking, it was never designed to deal with urban and rural situations which have little or minimum impact on the movement of vehicles and pedestrians. So, very valuable document for people working in those situations um, for you to follow and get the guidance from there. It's been, uh, the updated uh, document recently now includes uh, works on junctions, works on roundabouts, new specifications for pedestrian management and, and lots of other things which have come into play recently within the industry. We've also got the guidelines for working on roads, the HSA document, which is really a, a good practice document, more a common sense guide to working on roadworks, um, and very generalised, but again, a, a very valuable document. A few of the others which you might not be so familiar with here, we've got TS4, a document from the Department of the Environment, which works in conjunction with the European standard, EN 13422, and gives you the specifications for portable road traffic signs, cones, um, cylinders, barriers, their manufacturer, uh, how they should behave when they're impacted upon and things like that. It basically gives you details for your, your passive safety equipment which should be used. Moving on to the other European standards, there's a few listed there, there's many more than I've listed on that slide. Um, there are a couple of the, most of you will be familiar with. The N471, you may have all seen that on the labels of your hive clothing for instance. That's the European standard for the, the warning clothing. And we'll be having a look at some of the standards that are mentioned within that document a little, a little later. Also the road restraint systems, temporary vehicle restraint barriers and things also have a European standard and an Irish standard, um, EM1317. And again I'm going to look at that in a bit more detail um, a bit further into the uh, presentation. So you can see there there's, there's, there's quite a lot of standards for us to um, maybe check we're actually following and, and, and adhering to. So why police those standards? Why would they need policing? Well, depending on who you are and where you work in the industry, there could be various different questions you might ask yourself. So if I'm a, a company who performs temporary traffic man management works, questions I might ask myself are, are our health and safety systems and procedures working? Are our quality systems and procedures working? Are we compliant with current legislation and standards? Um, and obviously, Directors of companies will be very um, 
interesting in ensuring that all that is, is the case and it is actually up to standard, um, especially with uh, some of the news that's been in the, the, the press over the last sort of six months, um, keeping the directors out of jail, maybe one phrase that uh, people are familiar with. Um, if you're a temporary traffic management customer and you hiring a specialist to do your traffic management for you, for instance, you may ask yourself, well, are our sites compliant with current legislation and standards? Are we getting value for money? Are the traffic management company actually putting on the road exactly what I've requested and now I'm paying for? Are we using suppliers that enhance our image and reputation? So are we getting a good job um, along with that? Are we fulfilling our role as PSCS? Again, under the construction regulations, an appointed PSCS um, would possibly be the person monitoring and ensuring that those uh, operations are, are taking place in line with legislation and up to standard. Um, so another important point if you're a traffic management uh, customer. And then finally, we've got road authorities as well. As a road authority, are we uh, ensuring best practice on the roads under our control? Again, are health and safety regulations being adhered to? And are we fulfilling our role as a road authority? Which is obviously important under the, the Roads Act there as well. So there might be various different questions depending on who you are and where you work in the industry as to what you might need answering and why um, policing the standards um, would be applicable to yourselves. There's other benefits too. Obviously a, a managed policing system, uh, an auditing system, should ensure, as far as is reasonably practicable, the safety of the road worker. It should also ensure, as far as is reasonably practicable, the, the safety of the road user and the safety of the passing general public as well. And the, the third one on that slide, um, quite an important one I feel, it creates a more level playing field at tender stage. By ensuring those tendering know they must comply with the regulations and also they know that then that they will be checked as well. So there's less tendency to maybe uh, put stuff out on the carriageway which is below the standard. Now, as I said, uh, the, the area of the industry I work in predominantly is training. And over the last 18 months I, I've trained upwards of 850 local authority engineers in, in traffic management design. And things that come out of that course as I was going around the country training, one of the problems local authority engineers do face is the standard of the temporary traffic management that's put in place on the carriageway being some way below the standard that's submitted at tender stage via the paperwork. And then obviously checking that, the resources which come along with trying to check that and everything is a major problem for the local authorities. So in introducing a more um, stringent monitoring regime and going out and performing audits on the traffic management uh, works out there, um, it will give us this more level playing field that we're after a tender stage. Not only that, it has a knock-on effect of enhancing both the points above as well and ensuring the safety of the site um, is up to the highest standard we can possibly get. So there's plenty of benefits there to, the, uh, to going out and monitoring the system and auditing it. So whose responsibility is it then to audit the system? put those, these things in place and make sure that the traffic management is up to the standard. The client, will it be the client's responsibility to go out and audit the traffic management? Well, as far as the construction regulations are concerned, the client is responsible for appointing competent persons in the PSCS and PSDP roles. So maybe as a client going out and actually auditing temporary traffic management works themselves, it's possibly not um, their responsibility but they do have a responsibility to appoint competent persons that may be able to do that and keep those records. The contractor, who is usually more often than not the PSCS as well, would it be his responsibility? Well, if you're the contractor and you're performing temporary traffic management works yourselves and looking after the traffic management without a specialist, then yes, auditing your job, keeping an eye on your job, making sure it's up to standard, rectifying any non-conformances when they happen, maintaining that site to a sufficient standard, would all be part and parcel of your role under the uh, temporary traffic management works that you're doing. Which brings us to the specialist temporary traffic management contractor, who obviously if they come in as a specialist operator, um, you would expect 
specialising that in that area, that the temporary traffic management performed by uh, the various companies that do that within the country is up to the, the relevant standards um, that you've, you've asked for and that you're paying for as a customer. For both of these, if they're performing temporary traffic management works, there's legislative requirements, the proper skill set needs to be on site, somebody with a three-day signing light and a guiding course um, card, a CSCS skill card there, uh, needs to be on site within each temporary traffic management gang and be part of that gang as well. So there's legislative requirements uh, there as well. Next on the list with the HSA, is it the, would the HSA have any responsibility uh, regarding this? They would, they certainly are taking an active involvement in uh, monitoring temporary traffic management works. Um, and we know that, I personally know that, I've trained 50 of the uh, HSA inspectors over the last year in actually auditing temporary traffic management activities, so they are taking an active involvement. Um, they do have a limited role though. There was a recent court case, uh, Court County Council versus the HSA, which where Court County Council challenged some prohibition notices that had been issued and without going into the, the full details of it, the upshot was that when traffic management works are in the, or actual road works are in the, what's termed the intermediate phase, and that could be between maybe a DBM surface going down and it being surface stressed for instance, and when it's in that stage and there's no actual physical workforce on site, but there is still a temporary situation for the motorist that he's going to encounter and that still needs portraying to the motorist. It was judged that because it's not actually a place of work, that is not under the HSA's jurisdiction to be monitoring the standard of those roadworks at that stage. So they do have limited um, responsibilities as, as far as monitoring temporary traffic management works are concerned, but they are taking an active involvement in construction stage monitoring. So if it's not the HSA's responsibility, as an external checker, of works within those within that intermediate stage. And let's think about that intermediate stage for a moment. That's quite an important stage within the temporary traffic management uh, systems because it's within that stage that we've had six deaths in the country. The unfortunate Kentstown bus crash was, uh, happened on a, a road work site. Lots of other things came out of that court case as well. I'm not going to go into that in any detail. But that took place on a road work site where there was no work for us present, there was a temporary situation for the motorist, and the traffic management was viewed as severely lacking. And also the DBM surface in County Mayo where the young lady lost her life, and it's been viewed as uh, not having enough skid resistance, um, and it was going to be surface dressed at a later date. That would have been classed as a temporary situation for the motorist, and again in that intermediate stage. So it's, it's, it's quite apparent that when roadworks are in that intermediate stage and there is no monitoring, the standard of the roadworks is not always up to the correct standard and it does need looking at and monitoring six deaths tells us that definitely. So if the HSA have been told they're not to monitor under that situation, some responsibility has got to go to the road authority in that case as well, under their obligations as we, uh, under the Road Act as a road authority. So looking at all of those, if the answer to each of, those, each of those, then all of the above. At some stage within the process, from planning stage, from appointments by the client, of competent persons, right the way through the planning and construction stages, through to the end of the works, everybody there would have a level of responsibility in ensuring that those works are up to standard. <coughs>